Oh, yung mga estudyante natin maging sa ating pamantasan. Karamihan sa kanila are coming from homes that are disoriented in large proportions. Nakakalungkot yun. Why? Because it's not primarily sa kanila, kundi sa kanilang mga magulang na hindi kinalala ang mga simulay ng banal na kasulatan sa pag-aasawa. There will be families in heaven that are not complete. That's why in Revelation chapter 21, when we all get to heaven, there will be crying. There will be tears. Is that right? Do you find that in the Bible? May kalungkutan pa ba sa langit? Ha? Diyan kayo sa blay. Don't go back to your Bible. Revelation chapter 21. God will wipe away the tears. So before absolutely God will eradicate all of this, merong pagluha. Dahil kung walang pagluha, walang papahirin ang ating Panginoon. Whether there will be tears of joy, there will also be tears of sadness. Why? Sabagkat sa langit, mayroong mga pamilya na wala ang tatay. Inig ninyo? Inig ninyo? Mayroong mga tahanan sa langit na wala ang tatay. May mga tahanan sa langit na wala ang nanay. May mga tahanan sa langit na kapwa mag-asawa lamang ang naroroon at wala ang kanilang pitong mga anak. Mayroong mga tahanan sa langit na naroroon ang lahat ng siyam na mga anak pero ang kanilang mga magulang ay wala doon. Now tell me, kung kayo yung anak na yon, hindi ba kayo mapapaluha? Kung kayo yung magulang na yon, hindi ba kayo mapapaluha? We will judge with God those who have been reserved for the eternal end. At makikita natin ang mga kaluluwa nila. Makikita mo ang anak mo na hindi maliligtas. Makikita mo ang ama mo na hindi maliligtas. Sabihin niyo sa akin, will there be weeping in heaven? Yes. Papahiin yon ng ating Panginoon. Amen? Amen? Pero mas maganda sana kung walang luhang papahiin ng dahil sa kalungkutan, kundi luhang papahiin dahil sa kaligayahan Amen. at pagkasalamat. Amen. Amen. Ngayon, sabihin ko sa inyo, Mahalaga bang pag-usapan ang pagsasama ng mag-asawa sa usapin ng paghahanda sa pagbabalik ng ating Panginoon? Last night, sayang, marami sa inyong hindi namin kasama. Itutuloy natin mamayang tanghali ang ating pag-uusap tungkol sa ikalawang pagparito ng banal na espiritu. But I want to be sure that this part of our marriage enrichment short course will also be a part of our preparation for the second coming of the Holy Spirit. Let me just give you an eye view. Last night we started, pinasimulan namin ang ating pag-uusap about revival and reformation that we talk so much about pinag-uusapan natin ang pagbabalik ng ating Panginoong Jesus. But little, little, kakaunti lamang ang ginagawa natin ang usapin at pangangaral sa paghahanda sa ikalawang pagbabalik o sa pagbabalik ng banal na Espiritu. No matter how much we talk about the second coming of Christ, unless we get prepared for the second coming of the Holy Spirit, it is useless. Without the Holy Spirit, the entire ministry of Christ would not have happened until He returns for the second time. His immaculate conception, huh? His incarnation as God and man 
was made possible. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. And the second coming will only be possible in the outpouring of the latter rain, which is still the work of the Holy Spirit. The beginning, the first advent to the second advent, the Holy Spirit is a crucial entity to complete our plan of salvation. That is why it is important that we pray. Ha? Ganun po yung kahalaga, kaya nga hinihilingan tayo ng buong pamunuan ng Adventista sa buong sanlibutan that we ask in prayer the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> there is so much we can talk about the second coming. But if we don't talk about the second coming of the Holy Spirit, we fail to be part of the second coming of Christ. Do ito kung gustong iugnay itong ating usapin sa pag-aasawa. Maliba na ang mag-asawa, no? ang asawang lalaki at ang asawang babae, ay magkaroon ng pagkakaisa sa kabanalan, katwiran ng ating Panginoon. There will be many homes that will not be complete when heaven comes. Tingnan ninyo ang kanikanya niyong mga tahanan. How are your children? Where are they? Are they ready? Handa na po ba sila? Then that is our work. Kamusta po ang ating mga magulang? Are they ready? Kung sila'y buhay pa, then that is our work. God will save hope. mga tahanan. That includes your children. That includes my children. Sabi ko kagabi, kanina sa kabalahan naming mag-asawa, we had breakfast at around 6 o'clock in the morning. I was planning to call our children back home. Kasi sila lamang ang naroroon. I have... Uh, a grade 6 student who just recently graduated from the elementary years. Papasok sa grade 7. Then I have a grade 4. This school year, she will be grade 5. And I have a 6 years old who would soon, hopefully by God's grace, will be able to qualify for grade 1. All! Kompleto kami sa bahay, di ba? Sabi ko sa iyo kagabi, kompleto kami sa bahay. Two girls and one daughter. Two girls and one daughter. Si Brother Lavin, kompleto rin yan eh. One boy and two sons. Oh. But what is so extraordinary is this. I and my wife have decided that instead of doing the Bible study with all the three, we have designed a plan to entrust responsibility and respect among our siblings or children. So, sa panganay namin, when, he was in, when she was in grade 4, nag week of prayer ang nanay niya, tinanggap niya ang Panginoon, ang tatay niya ang nagbinyag. So now she's grade 6. And I told her, kinakailangan pag-aralan mo ulit ang doktrina when you were in grade 4. But this time, it will be different. You're going to study in order to teach. Tuturuan mo ang sunod mong kapatid. At yung sunod na kapatid, kinakailangan mag-aral siya sa pangunguna ng kanyang panganay na kapatid. In doing so, the elder or the eldest will have a sense of responsibility to live a good example while she does the Bible study. Am I right? Kasi mahirap yung magturo siya na hindi niya ano, isinasa kabuhayan. Believe me, children don't need a highly technical and theological Bible study to learn. They can learn Christ from their fellow children. Amen? And God designed it to be so. 
Yung pangalawa, mas lalalim ang kanyang respeto sa kanyang panganay, sa kanyang ate, because she owed her understanding of the truth and salvation from her older sister. The relationship will be bonded even more. When that is done, I'm going to review everything and eventually ask her to accept Jesus as her personal Savior. She's going to do the same with the youngest. And there will be equal opportunities to be responsible to your siblings as well. And that will make them aware that in the home, they have to live the high calling of the scriptures. Pagka ito'y hindi na itanim sa isipan ng mga kabataan bilang mga magulang, wala silang ibang pagkakabalahan kundi barila. Celebrity shows, you have Facebook, pornography is just everywhere. Sabi ko nga kagabi, di ba? Habang naghahanda ako doon sa labas ng hall natin eh, nandun yung dalawa ninyong anak eh, babarilan. And that is a classic example of the world we have today. I hope you get to understand na kung ano ang ating mga supling dahil sa ating pagsasama <coughs> bilang pagsasama. Nearly one third. Oh, ibata. Here's the secret. How to have a successful marriage in the end time. Huh? I'll read it. You have correct views of the marriage relation. Gano daw karami? Few. Kakaunti lang. Nearly one third nga eh. Pumilang ka ng tatlong couples. One, two, three couples. Only one of them understands the correct view of marriage relationship. Many seem to think that it is the attainment of perfect bliss. Meron pa akong narinig eh. Kung kaya bang na batang mag-asawa. Sa bahay, walang away-away kami. Hindi kami nag-aaway. Ako, malaki ang problema ninyo. It's either na under desire ka or she is very passive about it. Conflict is certain in marriage. Conflict is certain. Hindi po pwedeng wala habang nabubuhay tayo sa kasalanan. It will always happen. But one thing I know, it's not the perfect bliss that counts. Sabi doon, marriage in a majority of cases is a most dulling yoke. Para sa iba, pasanin na. Pasanin na sa iba. There are thousands that are naked, but not marked. Huh? Adventist Home, page 44. So, which you prefer, mated or match? Huh? Huh? Mated? Huh? There are thousands that are mated, but not marked. Kaya malaki ang problema, they thought that you only have to get mated. And they are not matched at all. When you say match, yung ipinagkaloob ng Panginoon na ang pagkakaiba ninyo ay magiging ninyong ano? Kalakasan sa bawat isa. What I specifically don't have becomes your strength. And what you do not have may be also in me. You get it? 
and God designed it to be so. Hindi lahat nasa sa iyo. And when marriage comes like this, when marriage comes like this, it becomes beneficial to each other. So, in that quotation from Adventist Home, there are three points that we should remember. May tatlo daw na sangkap ang pagsasama ng tapat sa kabanalan ng ating Panginoon. The first one, it must look heavenward. Kinakailangan ang pagsasama ay dinadala ang mag-asawa patungo saan? Sa langit. Pagka ang asawa mo ay dinadala ka sa impyerno. Malaking problema yun. <laughs> Because a marriage should bring the relationship towards heaven. And one who moves hmm. towards heaven in that relationship, talagang nga natin yun. Let's go over that. You have correct views of the marriage relationship. Marriage in majority of cases is a most calling you. There are thousands that are mated but not much. Ibig sabihin, yung match na pagsasama, it's looking towards heaven. Dinadala ka sa kabanalan, papunta sa langit. Are you aiming for that? Ay papano, papano jo pagka ako lang, yung asawa ko hindi. Then, it's you who has the responsibility to carry the relationship towards heaven. Hindi yung ikakatwiran mo na, hindi na dala ko sa impyerno, hindi pareho na kami dumawag ko sa impyerno. It couldn't be. Because that marriage should be looking towards heaven. Next, it should also increase love and fear for God. Hindi na kailangang Lalo rin lumago ang pag-ibig at pagkatakot sa Diyos. All of this are integral components of a much relationship. It will also enlarge each other's sphere of influence. Ibig sabihin, malalaman mo pagka kayo'y match kung sa inyong pagsasama lumalawak lumalalim ang inyong kakayanan upang magbahagi ng kabutihan at pagpapala ng ating Panginoon. If in your, bago ka mag-asawa, Sabbath School Superintendent ka, nung makapag-asawa ka na, malaking problema nun. Ay ba? Brother Ay ba? Kinakailangan sa pag-aasawa mo, makakatulong yung pag-aasawa na yon upang lalo kang higit na pakinabangan sa gawain ng ating Panginoon. Amen. Amen. Yun ang isipin ninyo, mga dalaga. Kasi kung ngayon pa lamang ay inilalayo na kayo sa relasyon niyo sa Panginoon, may problema yung pag-aasawa niya. Pagdating ng midweek, sa halip na nandun kayo sa simbahan, Narurong kayo sa silong ng okrahan <laughs> ng titigan. Ano ang problema ng okrahan? Masyado mo baba? <laughs> Is that relationship bringing you closer to God? Does it allow you to grow, increase your sphere of influence? for God and for the honor of God. Pagka hindi, naku, habang may panahon, hilingin ninyo ang kapangyarihan at kabanalan ng Diyos na maituwid ang inyong pagsasama. I would not agree to hiwalay. No. 
Kanya pagkaya ay nag-sweetheart Rachel, iisipin ang mainam. Because once you have done it, you have engaged in a relationship, a sweetheart. Separation is not a solution at all times. Kahit na mag-sweetheart, brother Lavi. Kaya nga kung maaari, huwag muna. Sapagkat iingatan mo, once you engage in it, you say yes to a man because someday soon, you would like to marry that same man. Hindi lang masabi na mag-sweetheart na. Ganun din ang mga lalaki. In the marriage relationship, you would like to be more useful. Hindi titigil. Pagka kay nag-asawa na, wala na. Pababayaan ng itsura. Umitim na ang liig. Umitim na ang kilikili. Ha? Ah, meron ding nagpapatuloy na. Hindi na buntis. Maitim pa rin ang kilikili at liig. Pinabayaan ang sarili. Bakit? All she thinks is about the children. No! That's wrong. God wanted you to be a better person after marriage. So if you have relationships that hinders you to grow, you are in a wrong relationship. Because much relationship tends you to increase your sphere of influence. Malaking bagay yan, mga kaibigan. Sapagkat in the last day, God wanted each one of us to be useful in our marriage. So, all these three, put them together, heavenward, what's the other one? Love and fear of God. And the last one? Increase. Your sphere of all of this will only go to one thing, and that is your spirituality. The spirituality in marriage is the focal point of a successful relationship. Amen. Nothing more, nothing less. You may go to many enrichment seminars, marriage enrichment seminars. They will talk about how to resolve conflict. How to do family finance. They will talk about how to get along with your in-laws. But none of this will guarantee a successful marriage. Only one thing. Some will talk about personality tests. Ah, takot, takot na personality test. O yung mga kuleri, kaya dapat yan ang kasama yung mga... To hell with that. I have nothing to do with that. The Bible only points one thing. To be successful in marriage, it's got to go down on that main core, and that is our spirituality. Our relationship with God is what guarantees a successful marriage. Let me repeat. Yung pong ating pakikipag-ugnayan sa Diyos, ang tangi susi sa matagumpay na pagsasama. So that is also where you both have to encourage each other. When the other is dying and ebbing away with this or her spirituality, the other spouse should help to lift the other. A threefold cord is not easily broken. The wise Solomon says in Ecclesiastes. Pero ang nag-iisa, sabi nun eh, papaano siya makapagpapainit kung siya'y nag-iisa? Kung siya'y mabuwal, kung siya'y nag-iisa, walang magtatayo sa kanya. That is the wisdom of Solomon. Pero ang sabi niya, mas mainam ang dalwa kaysa sa nag-iisa. And that is the essence of marriage. We ought to help and encourage each other in our spirituality. If there is something that husband and wives, husbands and wives should not forget is our relationship with our God. Spirituality is your relationship with God through Christ as a response to His grace. Look what Ellen White says. Make Christ first and last. Ano daw? 
Make Christ first and last. Siya ang una at siya ang huli. And best in everything. Constantly behold Him. And your love for Him will daily become what? Deeper. Deeper and stronger as it is submitted to the test of trial. And as your love for Him increases. Habang ano daw? Lumalago ang ating pag-ibig sa ating Panginoon. Your love for... Come on! Your love for... It's added. Husband and wife. will grow deeper and stronger. Adventist of 105. Papaano daw, papaano daw lalalim at titibay ang ating pag-ibig sa isa't isa? Huh? When you love Christ first, last, and the best in everything. So, hindi yan sa rose. Wala yan sa chocolate. If you'd like to love more, you've got to love Christ more. Why? Because the Bible says, God is... The more you have God, the more you have love. You follow me? Mga kaibigan? That's why spirituality is very important in the husband and wife relationship. Pagka mababa ang spiritualidad, mas marami ang hindi pagkakaisa. The more you love God, the more you will love your spouse, no matter who or she may be. Kaya ang susi sa pag-aasawa ng matagumpay is our love, our relationship with our God. So what should I do as husband? The more I should get closer to God. Ang mga ama, I would always do weddings. The other weekend, I was in Romplon with my wife. Somebody asked me, Pastor, ano po ba ang tunay na katungkulan ng lalaki sa tahanan? Well, I would only answer that in three P's. Husbands, your role is very, very significant. Hindi tagahanap buhay lamang. Three P's, so you wouldn't forget. Reminder for husbands. First, you should be the priest of your hopes. Tayo ang pari ng ating mga tahanan. Kung meron pagkakakilanlan ang mga bata sa tunay na likas ng ating Panginoon, dapat sa atin. Tayo ang nangunguna upang akayin ang ating mga anak ang ating asawa sa kabanalan ng ating Panginoon. Tayo ang huwara ng pagpapatawad at pagtanggap sa kamalian ng iba. Hindi tayo yung tiga. The priest calls the home to a worship and to honor and serve our loving God. Hindi yung tayo pang inaakay ng mga asawa nating babae. You get it? Are you still following? Yes. This is just a reminder. Alam nyo na ito, matagal na ito, sinabi na ito ng pastor na nagkasal sa inyo eh. But I would just like you to remember that our foremost responsibility in our home is being the priest of our family. Kaya kung meron kang lumalaking mga anak, ang responsibilidad na sila'y tumanggap sa ating Panginoong Jesus bilang tagapagligtas, is your sole responsibility as the father. Who dedicates the child? Are you listening? Who dedicates the child? The father dedicates the child. And the mother works with the father to grow the child in the grace of our loving God. Who sacrificed Isaac? Kaya pag nagde-dedicate ako ng bata, I would always ask the father to carry the child and bless the child, hindi lamang yung pastor. Because first, it is the father who dedicates the child. This is my offspring. Dapat maintindihan ng tatay na siya ang nagahain sa Panginoon at responsibilidad niya ang pagpapalaki ng may pagkatakot sa Diyos sa kanyang anak. That is where the mother comes in. Because the father cannot do it alone. 
But the father must be the priest of the Kayong mga tatay, huwag ninyong hahayaan na hindi ninyo mahahawakan ng inyong mga supli na matatahimik lamang pag nabigay sa nanay, goodness. May similya rin kayo sa batang yan. That means you are getting away from your child. Your responsibility to bring them to the feet of our Lord Jesus is so great that God will ask you of it when He returns. Okay. Makatandaan mo yan. Ang batang yan, nakasalalay sa iyong pangunguna bilang pari ng iyong mga. I wish, hindi naman lahat sana maging pastor. Wala nang magtatrabaho sa BIR, sa posto. Wala nang magtatrabaho sa ospital. But whatever the profession of your children will become is their understanding of what is to become a missionary of God. Yan may engineer, he will become a missionary engineer. Yan may a teacher, she will become a missionary teacher. Hmm? As your love for him increases, Tika, tika, pastor. Nasaan pa yung dalawang feet? Pakasal na lang. Ulit, ulit. No, 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 no. I'll finish that. I'll finish that. The second P is that you are the protector of your homes. Fathers, let me remind you this one. Tututukan ko yung mga tatay kasi mamaya pag kayo ni Ma'am Joy sa hapon, tututukan niya yung mga nanay. The second responsibility we have after being the priest is a protector of the home. <clears throat> Hindi lang yung ililigtas sila sa mga sakuna. No, the protector of the home should also include that we should protect them from the wiles and snares of Satan. Yun ang pinakamabigat na responsibilidad. Because everywhere you find the works of Satan. And if the father has no meaningful relationship with God, how would he know? Eh, siya pa nga ang nagririgalo ng baril eh. Oh, siya rin ang nagririgalo ng... ng... ng PSP. Ang laro dun eh, barilan. O mas mainam na yan, Tay. Kaysa yung magbarilan talaga. But that is more engaging. Tapos pagdating ng panahon, sinuntok ka ng anak mo, magagalit ka. Tinuruan mo siya. And he engages with others. Paglaro nila sa network, bantaya mo dyan, bantaya mo dyan. Titirayan ko rito, paglumabas siya, panata mo. <laughs> diba? Network. When you play Dota, And not only that, pagdating ng panahon, if he becomes disrespectful and he engages in violence, it's because in a season, you have been sitting down in his presence watching Pacquiao. Panatan mo! Yan! Turugin mo ang ngipin! Yeah! Panalong Pilipinas to hell with that! Then we talk about Pasad it in the name of true sports. But in reality, you're, you are allowing your child to see you spend idle moments from seven, from the pre bouts until to the main bout. Alas dote. Andong ka. Papapcorn, popcorn. What does that give as an impression to your child? Pwede palang manood ng boxing. Basta si Pacquiao. You would begin to say, look at Pacquiao now. He becomes your idol. Why? He's now talking about God. I don't want to judge Pacquiao. Pacquiao is our not, is not our subject this morning. What I'm trying to say, whatever form of violence, you should protect your children from it. Then the last one, fathers, you are not only the priest, the protector, and the last one is that you are the provider. 
Mahirap bang kalimutan nyo? Mahirap bang alalahanin nyo? Priest, protector, you are the provider. You should live a life within your means. And when you are the provider, you should teach your children to honor God with their tithes and their offerings. Hindi yung pagdating ng Sabado, doon mo pa bibigyan ng barya. You know what impression you make? God is good for the barya. Especially no, now that I promote Hope Channel, we always prepare the 20 pesos even before the Sabbath comes. Prepare your offering. Teach your children to have their offerings prepared before the Sabbath. Kahit na gaano kalaki yan, 1,000 pesos, when you just get it from your pocket and you don't teach them what it means to give, that's useless. Kahit bigyan mo pa yan ng 10,000, that's useless. You don't teach them stewardship. Oh, fathers, we are not only the providers, the protector, but your love grows deeper. God. Your love for each other will also grow deeper. So, the secret to a lasting relationship isn't so much of the relational skills huh, than to cultivate what? Spirituality. A meaningful relationship with God. All it takes is spirituality. Ayoko nang magsalita pa ng kung ano-anong psychology. Because I don't find those in my Bible. All I find in my Bible is get a meaningful relationship with God. Psalm 127, unless a home is built by God, it will never endure towards the end of God. Spirituality is the core of successful marriage. There are disciplines in order to enhance our spirituality. Look at them. Number one is what? It's prayer. These are the disciplines to enhance our relationship with our God and therefore to each other. So prayer is number one. In prayer, you share your thoughts with God. And when you share your thoughts with God, God knew it already. It is an acknowledgement that you want God to be your best friend. Kanino mo ba sinasabi, sense ka na Rachel, ikaw lang ang kilala ko eh. Ang mga naging estudyante namin. Kanino mo ba sinasabi yung mga importanteng bahagi ng buhay mo? When you're happy, when you're sad, to whom do you tell that one? Siyempre yung kaibigan mo, di ba? That's the first one who would know it. But when you make God also your best friend, then you should also share your thoughts with you with Him. Then prayer comes into that one. Ang mga tahanan who does not take time to pray, especially in a relationship, let me ask you carefully on this one. Do you really pray, intentionally pray as husband and wife? Because if you don't have that, you can start it now. Hmm. Mapansin mo yun eh, pagka mahaba ang panalangin sa publiko, Oftentimes, these are the people who don't pray often in their private life. When you have a prayerful life privately, you would always have short, meaningful, engaging prayers. Fewer! Because you have done them inside your closet. Prayer is very important in the husband and wife relationship. Do you pray for each other? When was the last time you prayed for each other? Hindi yung inaangatan niyo po si tatay, ingatan niyo po si daddy sa kanyang paglabas. We always do that one. What I'm asking is, do you have really spent time to pray for your spouse? You'll never stand the test of time as we draw to the ticking moments of our history you don't spend time to pray. Next, another spiritual discipline is conversation. Do you talk meaningfully with each other? 
O pag humiga na kayo, yung babae, salita pa ng salita. Yung lalaki, tulog na. Did it happen to us? Yes. But my wife would always remind me, it's not the length of time that you talk, it's the quality of time that you spend talking with each other. Do you still talk about the romance of your past life? Wala na. Lumalamba-lamba yung na yung ano mo eh, palat mo dito. Ang corny mo din, pausap-usap ka pa ng ganyan. Matatanda na tayo. But the more you have so much to talk about, eh matanda na kayo eh. Mas maraming pag-uusapan. Naalala mo, mami, nung nautot ka, nung tayo eh. <laughs> Naalala mo, Dad, nung ikaw ay... The, this should be recollected again and reminisced and bring it to your conversations how the Lord has provided for all your needs. Naalala mo, Dad, nung tayo na sa Palawan, wala ka tang makain, may tuma... Those are meaningful moments to talk and converse with each other. And the more you talk with God in prayer, the more you will be what? open to talk with each other about how has God blessed you in your life. Kaya kailangan yan. Tawa-tawa kayo. The next one. The next discipline in spirituality is what? The Sabbath. Do you go together to church? Itong mga spiritual disciplines na, these are tested and drawn from survey. Marriage, husbands and wives who are practicing this discipline tend to inculcate in the minds of their children a better image of God in their marriage. Pangatlo, Sabbath. Whether you're worshiping on Sunday or Sabbath, the Lord will impress you the right thing. But what I'm trying to talk about here is the time you worship together. Alani mo ilagay ko Sunday. It's really the Sabbath that we worship together. But do you come to church and worship God on a Sabbath? Pusible rin magkasabay kayong pumunta sa church eh. Pusible rin umupo kayo na magkasama. Pero ang laman ng utak ninyo. Ay iba. Diba? When you go to church, husband and wife, think of each other. That's the way to grow the married life in spiritual discipline. Yung hinahawakan mong kamay, asawa mo yan. And how can you make worship together? We take time to take notes. Then when we go home, my wife and I would compare notes. Anong natutunan mo, daddy? Anong natutunan mo, mami? Do you do that when you worship? Kaya mahirap mag-sermon. Raja Noel. Pagka ako ang nagsisermon, tinitiyak ko na pagtingin ko sa asawa ko, for sure, ang asawa ko nasa congregation. If I am not right with my wife, it is very difficult to what? To preach. Bakit? Habang nagsisermon ka, ganito ang itsura ng asawa ko. <laughs> <laughs> Di ba? Why? Because she does not see in your life what you are preaching. Tingnan niyo may ibig si Ma'am Joy. It's hard. Mahirap. Because if there's someone who would tell you straight to your face, it's your spouse. So worship together. Hindi naman yung, meron namang extreme nun. May kabaliktara nun, ganito naman. Pag sumimba silang dalawa, nakikinig sila kay Pastor Ivan, kay Brother Ivan, ganito ang upo nila. Yun, Pag pa medyo papatapos, narinig mo yun, mami? Ha? Makinig ka! Tamang-tama sa iyo yan! When you worship together, remember, enhance your spiritual discipline as husband and wife. Take time to take notes. Hindi tayo naglalaro dito, baka kala nyo nagbibiro ako. <laughs> When you go home, you start next Sabbath 
worshiping together your thoughts in God for each other. Sino ang mag-asawa? Pinaglalaan na natin ang panahon yan kahit na anong edad ninyo. I'm a very, very busy person. Marami akong pagkukulang sa Panginoon for my family. I travel a lot during the week. Sometimes I come home, may mga pagkakataon, sabi ng anak ko, when I was still at CIC back then, sabi niya, Mami, si Daddy ba eh Adventist pa? <laughs> sabi niya, bakit, bakit ka na? Bakit? That is to us very alarming. That's a signal that we have to realize our principle. Sabi niya, bakit? Eh, Mami, di ba pagkasabat, hindi tayo nag-work? Oo. Oh. Eh, si Daddy, bakit nasa work pa rin pagkasabat? That's true. We should spend time to worship together. Husbands and wives, kayo wala dito yung mga kaparehan ninyo. But I hope, since na you're coming from this place, from this retreat, you will be a better person with all these disciplines when you go home. Pray together. Converse together. Talk with each other. And worship together. Huh? Have a retreat. Ito nga, Pastor, kaya kami nag-retreat. Tumigil ka. Hindi to ang retreat sa sinasabi ko. A retreat when you can be alone for each other. Spend time. Oh, gastos na naman yan. Kaya saan mo gustong i-gastos yan? Sa pagpapayan ng analmet? <laughs> when you spend time for each other, that will always come with money. I'm not saying na kinakailangan ay maging garbo tayo or we spend so much on this. No! What I wanted you to understand is when you become alone for each other, it becomes meaningful. That becomes a spiritual discipline. You read the Bible together, you talk about your heart together in the presence of our loving God. There must be a retreat. Do we do this as husband and wife? How often? That is very, very important. Even for one or two hours, we do this as husband and wife. Lalong-lalo na sa busy itinerary na meron tayo. Huh? We treat, we share solid load with each other. Then, study! We are hearing God together. Do you have your Bibles? Kagabi, medyo nagkahiyaan kami kagabi. Parang feeling ko ngayon eh, parang hindi ako tanggap. May mga pinitiwan akong salita kagabi na magbigat-bigat. And I wish I would tell it also to you. I'm not saying that what we have planned for this retreat is wrong at now. But what I'm trying to say is this. I wish when we hold spiritual retreats like this, it will be intended for such a purpose alone. So that you get people to come because they understand that what we will do is study God's Word, not swimming. Not swimming. <coughs> Kung wala kaya itong swimming na activity, would we have more? It's a big question. And so to prove my point, I asked them last night, and I would ask you the same this morning. How many of you have your swimming attire but don't have their Bibles with them? How many of you have your cell phones here but don't have their Bibles with them? Imagine that. How many of you brought your computers but don't have their Bibles with them? Taas namin ang Bible eh. Mainam na lamang. Parang kabuti. Sukuta ng mga Biblia. But I think Pastor Ivan, 
Brother Ivan, we need to get it straight with our congregation. We are a people of one book. You get me? We are a people of one book. And that book is no other than what? The Bible. The more husband and wife read the Bible together, the more husband and wife engage in biblical studies, the more they will grow their love for each other. Do you take time to read the Bible together? We have improvised a way of worship in the home. My wife and I. So what we did is uh, read portions of the Bible responsibly, verse by verse. And after that passage, we take time. Mami, alin sa mga talatang yan ang sa iyo is very meaningful. Alin sa mga talatang yan, Daddy, ang meaningful sa iyo? Then we started to reflect on these verses according to our individual experiences. Do you take time to read the Bible together? Not just alone. Because the more you read the Bible together, the more you harness supporting each other in the spiritual discipline. You have your Bibles with you, husband and wife? Marati kong sinasabi ito every time na magkakasal, ang una ninyong ihanda ay yung Biblia na babasahin ninyong magkasama. Hindi yung gown, hindi yung hotel, yung pagkain, tatapos-tapusan. Yung Bible na isinalang, yung pang-Bible na ni Mahatma na Lola sa ninuno nila. Studying the Bible together is very important. Let me do it. We never have that success in the Next, in Sabidon, it's also the ministry or the partnership in serving God. This is another discipline. Do you have a ministry as husband and wife? Oh, eh, meron siya. Elder siya. Eh. Meron din ako. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. You can have your own ministry as an elder. You can have your own ministry as a deaconess. But you've got to have only one ministry as husband and wife. You can maintain your individual ministries, but you need to have one as a couple. That will make the relationship stronger. We have that, friends, on occasionally. That should be planned carefully. Whether that is giving bread every Sunday, if you do it, husband and wife, it will ban you like epoxy together. If it is giving leaflets or trucks on a Sabbath afternoon, you go out as husband and wife, that is a ministry together. If you are a doctor, you go to homes and minister to the sick as husband and wife, that is a ministry together. Do you do that? If not, then let me not condemn you. Start it when you get home. Decide on a ministry as husband and wife. My wife and I have several ministries. And this has made us understand each other better. Uh, one of those ministries we have is the radio program. Since I am with the communication of NTUC, we do that together. I still involve her. So we do a radio program together. She does the health portion in the first 10 to 12 minutes and I do the Bible study in the next 20 minutes. Kayo po'y patuloy na sumusubaybay sa dinig ng pag-asa. Ito po si Joe Orbe Jr. Nagaanyaya sa inyo na samahan kami sa loob ng kalahating oras sa pagsuklat at pagkalakay sa mga sipi ng katotokanan dito pa rin sa dinig. Every Sunday, every Sunday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we do this together as a ministry broadcasted nationwide for more than 60 years.
from one anchor to the next anchor to the next anchor until this time with joy and joy only. Do a ministry together. Huwag kayong makukontento na mas marami pa yung panahon ninyo na nagmuling kayong dalawa kaysa sa yung kumawa kayo ng ministry na magkasama. Nakakatagal nga kayo maglakad ng apat, limang oras, magkapon, paghahanap lang ng supa. <laughs> paghahanap lang ng pakuluan ng tubig. And yet, you don't have a ministry. Have a ministry together. Pastor, malaking problema yan. Eh, paano mo ang asawa ko eh? Ayun na nga eh. Sa pasimula kasi, mali. Pero ngayon, hindi solusyon dyan ang paghihiwalay. Engage your spouse to share with you in that joy of the ministry. Sure enough, when you pray for it, God will also provide the interest in the heart of your spouse. Pag-aralan mo kung saan siya mahilig. Doon mo siya i-drive. Oh. Mahilig magtataya sa loto. <laughs> oh, paano yan ngayon, Pastor? Paano yan? Sige, anong ministry ang meron ka dyan? <laughs> then, then, come and volunteer. See the church elders. See the church treasurer. Can you allow us to join the counting of the funds at the Sabbath? We should engage our brethren in different ministries. Ang mga pastor should be able to... Hindi yung uunahan mo na kagad. Ay, kung mandukas pa yan. Yung unang-una, ikaw ang may problema. The ministry in the church is not only for the pastor, the elders. It's for everyone who should be engaged in the Lord's work in that one big church. Amen. Discover where they are good at and engage them Alala ko sino yung mag-asawa na doon. Yung pagkalinggo, nandun sa may park ng FPUC, lahat ng street children, kinukuha nila. And they teach the street children. Ha? Huh? Ang brother at chika, no? See? They do that. Walang tigil yan. There is another ministry that on a Sunday, they go out early, 5 o'clock in the morning. They get the bread from a donor bakery and go along the streets and look out for the indigents and they give the bread, the bread to them. Whatever ministry, what will keep you together as husband and wife is when you love Christ deeper and when you engage in a ministry together. Siguro magaling yung lalaki magbago study. Pwede, sumama yung mabay. May mag-study kayong dalawa sa isa. At maaaring yung babae, marunong naman kumawit. Ay, hindi nga, hindi nga marunong kumawit. So, hindi mag-pray. What's important is you do it together. Should I stress this more? Second, another one, not second, is sexual intimacy. Hmm? That is oneness in God. Would you believe sexual intimacy is a spiritual discipline? Because it's from God, if God, it's God's invention, and therefore it must be approached spiritually. Hindi yung puno ng kalibugan. Sex must be seen as one that is gifted by God. It is God's invention for you, husband, and for you, wife, to experience a little heaven on earth where the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. So should also be one in the spiritual discipline. Hindi yung, ayoko na, tanda na ako dyan sa mga ganyan-ganyan. Do you care? There are a lot of sexual intimacy. It's not only done through intercourse. But when you hold each other's head and bring each other to a moment closer to God, that is sexual intimacy. Ang daan mo yan, ay ba? Hindi lamang yung sex ang sexual intimacy. No. 
In fact, there is little for women to experience in that act alone. For them to enjoy that, there must be a good preparation towards that event. Ito yung mga lalaki. Tanan, yun na. But the ladies know, if you'd like to have that best experience, whether in the evening or early in the morning, you've got to do it the morning before it comes. You'd start, tell her. Let her experience. Help her. Remember her. Be thoughtful during the day. And you will have a spiritual, sexual demand. Of course! As I've told you, sexual intimacy cannot always be physical. Sexual intimacy when you share with each other and become one, even in your thoughts and actions. That is sexual intimacy. Look what Satan has done. Any of our young people outside of marriage would like to have this sexual intimacy. They wanted the ecstatic feeling of it without the spiritual discipline. And they get a problem out of that. We have many of that. Not only in schools that are outside of our denominational work. Kahit sa loob ng EUT, marami. Ginagawa na ng mga bata, hindi pa alam ng din. Where would we know it? From them. Because the deed has no relationship with the children. But if they have a relationship with you, they will confide in you. Sana, ito ay maging mahalaga sa atin. Because if you are passionate with each other, husband and wife, your children will be more secure in love. The problem why many young ladies are wanting it outside of their homes is because there is a problem with the father. When was the last time your children saw that you have your wife, gentlemen, and kiss your wife in public? When? Hindi pa itulak. Isa namang nagsabi na ano, ay kung minsan-minsan, tatapik-tapikin mo sa buwin. I don't prescribe that. Whether in public or private, she must be honored. But you should show that. That is only the time when public show of affection is warranted. We should show our children in our families. Di bakit ka mo? Kasi pinalaki mo yung mga batang mali eh. Unang-una, hindi mo tinuruan ng sexuality. Kaya pag-aalik, magtatago pa kayo. Tatakbo pa ng kung ano. That should be shown to our children. They should see how intimate you are as husband and wife so that they would know who is the God they serve. Hindi ko sinasabi na magpakita kayo doon para lang sa mag-asawa in public. No! What I am asking is show that kind of intimacy even in public, most especially to your children. Unang-una, ikaw ang may salad. Teach them as young as they are. When would they know about sexuality? When? What age? Should they start knowing about sexuality? When? Tell me. Huh? High school. When? When? Huh? The moment they start thinking of it, you're saying it right. The moment they start asking of it, you should drive it in to the court. Well, to the point. When they start asking, God, what is this? As a young child, what is this? Or you we teach them, right? This is your ears. What do you call this anak? How about this anak? How about this? How about this? Oh, kita mo yan? 
Hindi ba sa ano? Saan tayo sa play? Di ba? So, pag may nakitang bird, that is that yours? <laughs> We should have come straight. Anak, that is the testes of a man. That is the vagina of a female. We should have been straight to that. God gifted every woman with that anak for childbearing and for the bonding relationship of husband and wife. The same with the man. We should have taught them. Para pag napapakinggan nila yun, alam nila kung ano yun. Alam nila, hindi yung, you, you know that? I saw the dog. It... <laughs> it tried to grab and catch the, the, the... Wala nang may sabi, sabi mo, bata? Well, you have never thought of what it should be. And they would discover that in the internet. Oh, ganito pala pag sexual intimacy. That's why in the MPRCB we came up with a new classification. I, I was there when we signed the document for all television networks. 14 of us leading television networks in the Philippines. When we signed the new classification for MPRCB, SPG. What does that mean? Huh? Strong parental guidance. That means Yung PG, nandun ka. You will guide them. But SPG would like you to sit close beside your child so that whatever comes there questionable, you will be able to answer that question. Sabi ko, bigay niyo sa amin. Papalabas namin niya. Minuminuto. Sapagkat yan ang gusto namin. Pag itbulaga, angal ka agad sila. Pwede naman siguro eh. Ano pa nga magagawa namin? Ginawa nyo na. Bubulyawang pa doon sa MTRCB during a press release. Eh bakit? Eh kasi yung mga palabas nila, kahit sabihin mong variety show, wholesome, eh yun naman mga nasayaw sa likod. Mga pagayong gaon. Halos ang mga suot ay... Eh kahit yung mga anak mo, yung mga pasayaw sayaw na gano'n, brother, eh, tanungin mo yun. Tanungin mo yung mga anak, kung gusto talaga nila na nakikita sa TV yung mga magulang nila, no? Ito! <laughs> Sexual intimacy must be the experience to us a spiritual discipline. Remember that. It's not something dirty. It is something that should be experienced at this place. A spiritual relationship. I'm closing on this. Don't worry. Obedience is another one. Father, even as a father, you've got to learn how to obey. Oh, sabi ng mga babae. As a human soul. Obedience is very important. Doing God's will together. There are times when we would not feel it, but we've got to do it. Sabi ng mga babae. Papas kasi natin ito. Next one is confession. Ha? Confession. Importante pala ito. Confession is a spiritual discipline. The Bible says, confess one to another. Diba? Am I right? Are you still with me? Yes. Confession is a spiritual discipline. Sa halip na pumunta ka sa pare, it should be to your spouse. Never confess anything to a pare that you have not confessed your spouse. All together, forget about the first. Confess to the latter. Confession is very important. It should be learned by husband and wife. Are you still with me? Or am I to stop? When confession becomes huh, a tradition between husband and wife, hindi sana mahirap resulbahin ang mga pagtatalo-talo sa loob ng tahanan. Now, let me ask you, husband, sino ang dapat na mag-initiate ng reconciliation sa pagkakagalit ng mag-asawa?
Pero sino ayaw magpasakot sa asawang lalaki na walang ginawa kundi ipagkaloob sa iyo yung nararapat sa iyo? Na walang ginawa kundi ibigay sa iyo yung ikaliligaya mo sa tulong at diwa ng ating Panginoon. You would like to submit. And that is the concept of the Bible in submission. When the man exercises his authority, he pays on love and giving. No woman would resist submission to that kind of love. Amen, Pastor? That's our authority as husband and wife. So, to wrap it up, God's spiritual discipline is based on giving. Love is all about giving and and <laughs> sabi nila eh, love is a two-way street. It's giving and giving. Yes. It's giving and 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 it doesn't think about the receiving. Saan sa Bible yung yung love is giving and receiving. You don't find that in the Bible. All you find in the Bible is what greater love has man for the other than to what? To give and take? No. Than to give his own life. Receiving becomes a reciprocal but it's never the motivation of loving. Pag minahal ko ang asawa ko, I will give myself to her. Her natural tendency in response is what? Is what? Is what? Give then! Oh, nasa ng receiving? Sige nga! Yung receiving ay hinihalo doon ang sanlibutan eh. Hinihalo ng sanlibutan, Rachel. Kaya, pagka kayo hindi nagkatuluyan, ganito ang eksena. Ito na ang pangit-pangit mong picture! Ito na ang mga bulaklak mo! Nagkatuloy yan eh. Ibig sabihin, reciprocal pala. Pag hindi, ibabalik. But when love is giving, even if you are in the losing end, you don't think about what? Receiving it back. All it takes is giving. And what? And what? And? It will continue to give and give. <laughs> That's the spiritual discipline To wrap it up, <laughs> Have you listed all the disciplines? How many? Are you sure? Are you sure? How many? What's the first? What's the last? <laughs> Prayer and submission puts all in between together like a book stand. Get it? You start it with a prayer. Always maintain a prayerful life, husband and wife, and submission becomes easier because God finds you together in love. The Lord bless you.